For the first time in history, we're seeing the successful development and demonstration of general purpose AI. Its name is AlphaGo and it was made by Google's DeepMind division. The AlphaGo AI algorithm beat a human at the world's hardest game. This is a historic moment in computer science and artificial intelligence. So what exactly is Google DeepMind? Where did it come from? And what can the company's artificial intelligence actually do? In this video, we'll find out. A computer program beat a human brain at the ancient Chinese board game of Go. The final score, 4 to 1, a triumph for artificial intelligence equipped with human intuition. The victory of a program over a human in the ancient board game Go has sparked intrigue and, in some cases, concern. It shows that a machine has approximated human intuition and outsmarted the best human brain in the game. It's something that scientists hadn't expected to happen for at least another decade. And it's a giant leap for artificial intelligence, showing that machines can learn on their own. I think maybe the game ended. No, I don't think so, because it looks like, it looks like uh, he is still counting. No, I think he resigned. Wow, I think you're right. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This was the moment a computer called AlphaGo beat a master of the ancient Chinese game Go. It's not the first time a grandmaster's been humbled by a machine. But what makes AlphaGo different is that it's the first demonstration that machines can truly learn and think in a human way. AlphaGo's victory shocked experts in the artificial intelligence community. Many thought such an event was at least a decade away. So firstly, a few questions. Why is this important and what's all the fuss? AlphaGo shows that machines can really learn. How so? Well, instead of using brute force to calculate all the moves it could make, like previous AIs, AlphaGo used reinforcement learning and neural networks to mimic the learning process of a human brain. Keep in mind that the ancient Chinese game, Go, has as many more possible moves than chess as there are atoms in the entire universe. So there's no way of just calculating every possible move on the board. That's practically impossible. For this reason, Go is the holy grail of AI, and learning to do such a task from scratch is a huge feat. Further to this, DeepMind's creators say that the algorithm can learn many more things without alteration or guidance. In other words, the AI is general purpose. We always used to talk about, well, if we could eventually crack Go and have a program that could beat the world champion, then we must have invented some generic general purpose algorithm. So maybe we're on the cusp of all of that. If you ask a great Go player why they played a particular move, sometimes they'll just tell you it felt right. So you can, the one way you can think of it is that Go is a much more intuitive game, uh, whereas chess is a much more logic-based game. So what is DeepMind? Google DeepMind is a British artificial intelligence company that was founded in September of 2010 as DeepMind Technologies. It was renamed when it was acquired by Google in 2014 for $500 million. Interestingly enough, this was just after Facebook had just finished negotiations with them in 2013. And another fun fact, Elon Musk is actually an investor in the company, just to keep an eye on them of course. DeepMind received the Company of the Year Award by the Cambridge Computer Laboratory in 2014. So where did DeepMind come from? DeepMind was first a startup co-founded by Demis Hassabis in 2010. Demis was a child genius of sorts and went from being a chess prodigy and reaching master level at age 13 onto becoming the lead programmer of Lionhead Studios for groundbreaking games such as Black and White. After this, he went on to start his own gaming studio before leaving to complete some extra studies at the University College of London. This is where he would meet the future co-founders of DeepMind in 2010. So what is the goal of DeepMind Technologies? According to their website, their goal is to solve intelligence. They are trying to achieve this by combining the best techniques from machine learning and systems neuroscience to build powerful general purpose learning algorithms. Or in other words, they want to formalize intelligence, find out what it is and how it works. The end game is not just to implement this into machines, but also understand the human brain. Demis explains further, quote, attempting to distill intelligence into an algorithmic construct may prove to be the best path to understanding some of the enduring mysteries of our minds, end quote. 
The key here is that this machine is general purpose. This is very important, but more on this later. Okay, so how does this all work? The AI from DeepMind uses a technique called Deep Reinforcement Learning, which makes it very different from other AIs, such as IBM's Watson or the primitive Siri or Google Now. The AIs just mentioned were only developed for a predefined purpose and only function within their scope. DeepMind claims that their system is not pre-programmed and it learns from experience using only raw pixels as data input. So the way we start off um, training AlphaGo is by showing it 100,000 games that strong amateurs have played that we've downloaded from the internet. And we first initially get AlphaGo to mimic the human player. Um, but of course, ultimately, we would like uh, AlphaGo to be stronger than uh, human amateurs and compete with the top professionals. So the way we do that is, after we take that first version that's learned to mimic human play, we then allow it to play itself 30 million times on our servers and uh, using reinforcement learning, um, it, the, the, the system learns to improve itself incrementally uh, through uh, it avoiding its errors and increasing um, and improving its win rate against older versions of itself. Uh, and after all these games, um, then you end up with a new version that can beat the old version, the original version, around 80-90% of the time. Technically, the reinforcement that DeepMind uses is model-free, meaning that it doesn't need a structure or set of rules to learn. According to MIT's take on the Google algorithm, the neural network, in theory, should be able to access an external memory in a manner that mimics the short-term memory of the human brain. In a way, it almost seems like our brain's design might be the most efficient way for the creation of local intelligence. Who would have guessed? So that's all good. What about this general purpose term? What does that actually mean? Well, because the machine learns from raw experience and data, it can perform well across a wide variety of tasks, straight out of the box. Okay, so that's enough talk. Let's watch the system in action, learning how to play Breakout. And remember, the machine didn't have any foreknowledge as to what task it was going to complete. It had to figure out how to do everything only from its own experience. Um, is the machine before training. So this is literally the first time um, the machine has ever seen this data stream. And it's controlling the green rocket here, and, it's, and you can see it's losing its three lives immediately. Um, so it's, it's basically terrible at the game, um, as you would expect. Now after training, this is like overnight, we leave it playing the game um, overnight on a normal com computer, so for about eight hours. You come back in the morning, and now it's superhuman level. So now the machine can play Space Invaders better than any human can. Uh, it's modeled the world, the game world, so well it knows where the Space Invaders will be ahead of time. So as the Space Invaders speed up, when you get less of them on the screen, it does it fires the final shot as a kind of predictive shot of where the final Space Invader will be in a few seconds. Time. But the cool thing is, after understanding how to play a few games, it will be able to transfer this knowledge and understanding across more games. At the moment, DeepMind is currently playing games from the 1970s and 80s, but work is currently being done on more complex 3D games such as Doom, which appeared in the early 90s. So what could general purpose AI be used for? We'd love to uh, use these uh, types of algorithms for things like healthcare and science and improve the speed of breakthroughs in those areas by helping uh, uh, human experts uh, achieve more. In a number of interviews, Dennis has talked about applications in healthcare, smartphone assistance and robotics as possible applications for general AI. Some other applications of such AI include online customer service, computer vision, finance, general computer science and news publishing and writing. General purpose AI actually could be huge. It can be thought of as another emerging science. Much like Newtonian physics laid the groundwork for technology such as rockets, a science founded in general purpose digital neural networks that use reinforcement learning could lay the groundwork for unimaginable things in the near future. Okay, so we're almost at the end of the video, but there's one pressing question. Should we be worried? In the thousands of years of meaningful civilization, our modern existence right now is an anomaly. We've overcome the limits of nature with technology that helps us facilitate such a lifestyle. But artificial intelligence is different. The reason being, AI is the first thing humans have created that tends to function in a way that we can't predict. So, should we worry? My belief is that the fear of the unknown is mostly what drives the hysteria that arises from AI anxiety. There's not enough time in this video to go through all the theories of how things could turn out, but it's an interesting topic within itself. 
The website Wait But Why has a fairly interesting and comprehensive look at AI. We don't have time to explore it all, but the article does raise an interesting point though. It's about how humans have an inability to perceive exponential change. For a long time, people aren't going to take AI seriously and it would seem like progress is very slow, but then suddenly it could overtake our wildest expectations. One of the methods that AI could use to achieve this outcome is by giving itself an ability for self-improvement, thus following the law of accelerating returns. Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk have both shown their reservations towards AI, but others like Paul Allen, co-founder of Microsoft, have different views. If you can forget about the movie Terminator for a second, there is a possibility that AI could be man's greatest aid, fixing fundamental problems on our planet and allowing us to have technology and infrastructure that could have otherwise taken us centuries if we tried to figure it out ourselves. But on the other hand, there is a possibility that AI could be malicious and would outwit us, but at this stage, we really just don't know yet. And again, this is a story for another day. So at the moment, I'm not worried, but cautiously optimistic. As for DeepMind, one of their conditions after Google's acquisition was that they establish an AI ethics board, and I think most of us would agree that that's a prudent decision. All in all, we may be at a historic point, a critical point in artificial intelligence. The future could see deep neural learning and general purpose AI in our smartphones and computers, some say that we might even have to start thinking of a whole new economy. Reason being, AI could take over a lot of information-intensive, specialized jobs, leaving only jobs that are creative or emotional in nature, something that AI might never achieve. I honestly can't say where all of this will lead with any certainty, but then again, I don't think anyone can. If you take a look at the macro picture in all of this, after many decades of trying to build smarter computers and algorithms, it turns out that the best blueprint was in our heads the whole time, the human brain. So naturally, our minds are capable of so much, it just depends on how we use it.